Hi everybody! Our unique string collection, Synchron Duality Strings, offers a lot of innovations and a lot of possibilities. With this video I'd like to highlight all the new features of this brand new library, but I also want to show you some tips and tricks how to use these strings effectively, which might be inspiring for your workflow. In a nutshell, to tell you what I had in mind when designing and producing this library. The naming of the library informs about the initial idea. Synchron Duality Strings. When working with ambient libraries, sometimes you want to have a closer, more direct, maybe a crispier sound. To achieve this, you have to use close mics, as you would do in real-world orchestral recordings. When doing this, you get the section leader more prominently in your mix, more or less a zoom in on an individual player in the section. In a perfect world, you would have moved the whole section closer, which is not possible in a convenient way. In the sampling world, you usually start layering libraries to achieve this goal. Even if you use libraries of the same brand, it's somehow a compromise. For a perfect result, you would need a performance of all musicians in a wet and a dry environment together at the same time. They should be able to hear each other so that all musical aspects are perfectly in sync, like volume, timbre, vibrato, note lengths, phrasing, and so on. So I really wanted to make this work. Thinking about the options at Synchron stage, I realized that it is possible. We have two stages, our famous big hole and the smaller dry hole. Doing film scoring for seven years now, our musicians are trained to perform with headphones to deliver perfect results. The two stages are perfectly set up with a Dante network, video and so on. So what we did was sampling two string orchestras in two stages at the same time. Let's have a listen how this works. So in the first example, I will show you a short passage uh, where I compare the stage uh, sound of the large stage and the uh, uh, smaller uh, dry stage. So I play at first just the room mix of the large stage. Now I solo the mics of the dry stage. And now in combination. When I introduced the idea to our chief recording engineer Bernd Matzak, he was immediately convinced that this will work because he realized that this will offer a lot of creative options when setting up mixing templates. So he added an extra feature to this concept. Let's do two different setups inside the dry stage, using different mic types to get a bright and a dark microphone option. So what you get with this library are two strings libraries at once a large ambient one and a chamber sized dry one which are matching 100%. You can use it in combination or separately. We will now look into the different patches similar to a walkthrough. Many things are already well known but I'll try to show some hints and tricks which are maybe not so obvious and there are also new things which I will of course explain. Starting with the short section, the usual suspects like spick, stack, detachés. What you see is that there are always two variations, bold and agile. Regarding agile, I've seen that there's often some confusion. For example, if you perform repetitions with both versions, they sound similar, simply because of the fact that they are the same. The agile version becomes important when performing melodic phrases. The normal version offers a kind of starting sound for each new note. In most cases, musicians wouldn't play it that way. They would perform such a phrase similar to the agile style. The first version in the bold mode compared to Agile. So this has more natural fluidity, also uh, a string ensemble would definitely perform this like the Agile style here. Don't forget that the data shake can be used very flexibly. The maximum length is about one second but you can perform any shorter length with realistic results because of the Syncron Player's release sample technology.
What's more, there are different styles of data sheets, soft, regular and Mercator. Here you get three different playing styles. Which one's the right one will depend on the musical context. In most cases, the notation in a score will be the same. Musicians usually choose the right style instinctively or do get instructions by the conductor. First, soft attaché. Regular. Mercato. If we look at the spiccatos, you will see there are two different kinds of spiccatos, both with bold and agile options. If we compare bold versus agile, you will hear the difference. You can bold, uh, bold yeah. And agile. The tight speak is an even faster performed version. It's tighter and most important, it has much more variations, which enables a high amount of repetitions without getting into machine gun problems. Just uh, in different uh, velocities. Staccato does have a slightly longer note length compared to spiccato. Most importantly, it matches perfectly with the spiccatos, which makes for very good and realistic results when switching between these two articulations. Let's look at the legatos. In a nutshell, there are four parameters available for legato patches. The start note of a phrase, the end note, the vibrato style of the sustains, and finally, the transition between different notes, the legato connections. First, let's look at the legato connections, the regular legato. That's in most cases the standard articulation, therefore on the first position in the articulation tree. It's the perfect choice for phrases in slow to medium tempo. All interval samples do have two variations, so if you have to perform repetitive phrases, you get a much more lively character. A very good option is to interact regular with slur legato. Slur legato offers a very decent slide into the target note. Here's an example where we have the same interval three times, and for the last one we switch from regular to slur legato. You will hear that the phrase becomes more expressive without changing anything, just switching to slur. Slur legato is also capable to perform exclusively longer phrases, even in a faster tempo. The portamento is a longer and more prominent slide between two notes. We instructed all our players to perform the portamento as tasteful as possible, especially to get the slides not too prominent volume-wise. I'd also like to mention that all legato patches offer multiple up and down strokes when you perform repetitions on the same key, so real reboing is available all the time. Archa Legato, we have developed a completely new concept of recording and mapping this category of performances. 
The goal was that it should work perfectly in all situations for runs, drills, ornaments. First, let's compare simple agile runs with the real thing. Duality strings offers also real recorded octave runs so we can easily compare. First a performance using Agile Legatos, the second one an original performed run. So you hear that the result is really pretty close. Maybe impossible to distinguish in a blind test. As I mentioned, the Agile Legato can do much more than just runs. Now the starting notes, the attack variations. I call it starting note because these attack variations are exclusively applied to the starting note of a phrase. Anything performed after the first note in a legato connected style is not affected. All examples we've heard were based on the regular attacks, more or less the all rounder of the attacks. If you want to have a very soft and delicate beginning of a phrase, the soft attacks are your first choice. Here it's important that the starting note should have time to develop. Performing just a fast phrase with a short starting note is counterproductive and might cause a bumpy effect. So to make it more clear, I just switch between the normal attack and the soft attack. The mezzo forte. The counterpart of the soft attacks are the fast attacks. Especially when you have to perform multiple short phrases in a row, this articulation is mandatory. And if we just compare this with the soft attacks, the same phrase. So it doesn't work, no? it's too slow. Can be fast. Let's look how normal works. A little too slow. Also fast attacks is mandatory if you have this very short uh, starting note of a phrase. The fast attacks are also a perfect choice when you have to switch between legato and detaché style and you don't want to switch articulations. The final attack articulation is the sforzato. This one has the heaviest impact on the starting note. It works for piano articulation and of course in fortissimo. And again, it works very well altering between legato and non-legato marcato style. beginning needs an end. In the sampling world, these are usually dedicated release samples, which represent the fading sound of the instruments and the reverberation of the whole. All articulations, except very short ones like spiccato, staccato and pizzicato, are mapped with release samples. So far we have heard the regular releases in all examples. Duality strings also offer a soft variation, which has a slightly longer fading performed by the musicians. First the normal release, the soft release. Furthermore, we have a super soft version. Attention, this articulation is only active when you perform at the softest dynamic. The higher dynamic regions trigger the normal soft versions. Here you get a very musical ending, fading into a kind of niente.
This articulation also works perfectly when you extend a velocity crossfit down at the end. Duality strings offer two styles of vibrato sustains, poco vibrato and molto vibrato. The musicians have been instructed to perform a kind of poco vibrato which does not yell vibrato but offers a nice and gentle sound and the molto vibrato is, yes, a molto heavy vibrato. Let's compare these two styles and of course, as usual, crossfades are always possible. I will start now with the poco vibrato. Molto vibrato. Now a short phrase in poco vibrato. Molto vibrato. And now something in forte, starting poco vibrato. Molto. Finally, we do have another sustain style for the legatos, the espressivo. Here the musicians do a very gentle crescendo and diminuendo in the first four seconds. This kind of articulation is therefore useful for slow and expressive lines, which need this kind of built-in expression. You can use it with any legato style, regular, slur and portamento, and also with all release variations. It's also possible to perform medium fast lines. Of course, here you don't trigger the crescendo and diminuendo parts of a note, but you get a very intimate restrained quality if you need that. This is especially useful in the lowest dynamic range. All the examples we've heard now for the different style options are also available in long note patches. There is more or less no big difference. The long notes patches are a first choice if you don't want any legato connections between notes and if you want to perform simple chords. Pizzicato and Collegno work very similar to the short notes. We have again bold and agile options. And here is a tip where you can use agile versus bold in a different context. Fact is that for these articulations, the difference is not that big, but it offers more or less a different set of samples. For example, if you have a solo phrase which has to be repeated without any tempo and volume changes, switching between regular and agile offers two different versions out of the box. If we look at the tremolo options, you will notice it's more than just tremolos. There are two tremolo speeds, legato options and different attack styles. First we listen to the two tremolo speed options, fast and slow. Of course there are crossfit options and if you want to perform repetitions within a tremolo to give some emphasis, that's also possible. Fast attacks offer very accurate attacks 
ideal for short separated fast movements. And these four Zato attacks offer really heavy impacts on the attacks. A typical style in dramatic passages and often used in operas of the Romantic era. I start with the normal attack. Fast attack. And this Forzato attack. Finally, tremolos with legato connections to enable fluid lines. Even super fast passages are possible. You can choose between regular and slurred legatos. Personally, I find the slurred legatos even more impressive and realistic. Measured tremolos, also known as fast repetitions, are prepared from 120 to 180 ppm. Similar to the tremolos, a lot of potential is included in this patch category. An innovation is the possibility to perform repetitions within the fast repetition. There are multiple attack variations available. A well-known feature is the option to use a final repetition note at the end or to choose the X release without the last note. This patch enables smooth passages with pronounced attacks. For fluid movements, legato and slurred legato options are the best choice. These kind of performances are very typical for fast double or triple bow movements. I think it's becoming obvious that we wanted to make each patch, each articulation, as versatile as possible. I remember our early trade show presentations where Paul did a tremendous job to present our first generation libraries. Of course people wanted to try out the stuff on a the keyboard there. All these visitors in general did not have a chance to learn before how the library works and how the different articulations react. For Paul it was quite stressful to lead them into the right direction. Okay, you should not perform legato passages with a drill patch, or don't play repetitions within a fast repetition patch. You should avoid this and that. So my goal now is to create patches which offer cool and realistic sounding results even with insane keyboard performances, and most importantly, the output is supposed to inspire your composing process. In the beginning of my work on VSL, my mantra was, it should be possible to translate every musical idea with our libraries. And now I say, the possibilities might exceed your expectations. Just try it out. This approach also applies to the trill category. There are trills from minor second to major third available. And again you will see legato options and you can perform repetitions and so on. Let's try it out. So all patches offer cool results staying within a selected patch. But there is no doubt that combining different articulations leads to even more inspiring results. There are endless possibilities. Let's just pick out some examples. First combining agile legato with drills. And now combining shorts with measured tremolos. And finally, combining data sheets with normal legato. Harmonics, in our case fingered harmonics, are not a bread and butter articulation, but offer bread and butter playing styles, like shorts, sustains with fast and regular attacks, 
and tremolos, also with regular and fast attacks. Just keep in mind that fingered harmonics are not so easy to perform, so a lot of things you can do on your keyboard with realistic sounding results might cause difficulties in a real-world recording. There's also an interesting sound design option included, where a regular decolation is layered with harmonics in octaves. And the crossfade knob enables a kind of overtone control to your sound. Now for something completely different, glissandos. Looking at the options in the articulation tree, you will see there are octave, fifth and second glissandos. Two different tempos for the glissando speed, boat and tremolo glissandos and of course up and downwards versions. Let's choose the first one, the octave boat glissandos up. Most importantly, you are not limited to an octave. Depending on the note length, you can release the glissando at any pitch. If you hold the key, the glissando leads after reaching the octave into a sustain note. The fifth and second glissandos do have a similar concept. They just reach the target note within a fifth or second. The tremolo glissandos offer exactly the same options and as usual, there is an option to crossfit between boat and tremolo glissandos. Now let's dive into the wonderful world of runs. We already listened to the comparison between runs and archer legato. So the question is, where are the benefits? At higher registers, playing runs is becoming a challenge for the musicians, though there are light inaccuracies which are typical for these kinds of performances. This is naturally covered in these phrases. Furthermore, the pre-recorded runs are super easy to perform on a keyboard. You will see simply playing around could trigger fresh musical ideas. All runs are structured in 12 diatonic scales, from C to B. All runs are mapped to the starting note. For example, the C runs are mapped only on the white keys, the C scale. The G runs are mapped exclusively on all keys on the G scale. You see that the octave runs always go through the whole octave, even if you just play a short staccato note. This makes it easy to combine runs performing on the keyboard. If you hold the key, the run leads into a sustain note. So you have control over the length of the target note. In addition to the octaves, you get fifth and third runs, which are powerful modules to construct virtuosic phrases. I recommend to play around with these patches. I personally like this kind of phrase, which is based on the third down runs. Needless to say that it would be impossible for me to perform this on a keyboard, playing all notes within this phrase. Here's a trick 
to easily achieve runs in addition to third, fifth octaves. I take the fifth runs and perform a short second step grace note at the beginning. Now I get a run over a sixth. If I perform a third grace note, I achieve a run over a seventh. You just have to perform the tempo of the grace note similar to the runs tempo to get a convincing result. Generally all runs, and also the glissandos, have been recorded in octaves. The smaller intervals are constructed using dedicated releases for the end of the phrases. So the only limitation you have to be aware of, the ranges for the upper runs glissandos are limited, the last starting note is always an octave below the highest note. For the down movements it's the same. The last available starting note is an octave above the lowest possible note of the instrument's play range. We have only worked with the legato runs, let's now check out the detaché runs, which are also quite impressive. Everything you could create with the legato runs, you can also do with the detaché runs. Synchron duality strings also offers a new category of instrument presets. So far we had velocity controlled presets, further velocity x-fade presets using CC1 and velocity x-fade excluding all short notes. The new category, velocity x-fade plus velocity control, exclusively uses CC1 for velocity crossfades and velocity for articulation switches. We will go through all of these available articulations. First one, spiccato and staccato. The shorter spiccatos are triggered with low velocity and the longer staccatos with high velocity input. It's a very powerful combination because altering these two articulations on the fly offers a lot of possibilities. The three detaché attack variation from soft to regular and macato are logical candidates for using velocity switching. The same approach is used for the attacks of all the legatos and long note pages. Here you have four different levels, soft, regular, fast and sforzato. A different approach is to switch between up and down phrases for all the glissandos and runs. This makes a powerful articulation category even more versatile. Now with third runs. And finally, another approach for the trills. To stay within a diatonic scale, you have to alter between minor and major seconds. So if I want to perform a trill scale in C major, I need a major thrill on C and D, then a minor trill on E, major trills on F and G and so on. With the velocity switch solution, you can perform this on your keyboard easily. Minor trills with low velocity and major trills with high velocity. Exactly the same solution is available with the minor and major third trills. We are now at the end of this presentation and I hope some of the instructions have been helpful for you. Lastly, I want to give you some inside information about the genesis of this library. In the first stage, I thought we will just do a small library which will focus just on sustains with different timbres and that will offer cool choices within a palette of sounds. The combination possibilities of the two stages and timbres like regular bowing, sordino sound, flatando, ponticello should do the trick. 
when my ideas and plans went around at VSL, it was not clear what we would record in detail, Paul mentioned that we definitely should not leave out portamentos. In the first reaction, I was not that amused because I didn't have plans to record any interval samples. They are always so exhausting and time-consuming to produce. But thinking a few days about the possibilities of the duality concept with two stages, I was so convinced that this new approach is an important step forward. So I decided to do it right. Therefore, this library has become a real big thing. Okay, now you will probably say, that's fine, but Sordinos at Synchron stage and also Flatando and Ponticello would have been great. And of course, you are right. So I tell you a secret. Really everything you've seen and heard in this video has been recorded with Sortinos also. And we did smaller subsets in Flotando and Ponticello style. The amount of the whole material is so big that it is impossible to do an overall release including everything. As I said, everything has been recorded already and the editing has also started. I cannot tell you a release date for the upcoming releases, but we try our best to deliver as soon as possible. Thanks for your attention and enjoy the work with our duality strings. I'm really looking forward to hearing the first demo compositions.